OK, so let's find some atomic term symbols for some electron configurations. And again, these are free atoms, so we're going to use orbital configurations like s1, s2, d1, d2, etc., etc., and not um, molecular configurations like t2, g1. Um, so one thing to keep in mind first is that uh, all closed shell configurations, by which I mean all electrons are paired and all orbitals are filled, so closed shell, right? Shell is closed because everything is filled. Um, configurations are going to be uh, R singlet S. So we'll do an example for Y. So example one. One possible closed shell configuration, again, all, or, all, or, all orbitals are filled, is S2. So this is lowercase s. So we're, we're having some s orbital. And it's completely filled. So here's my s orbital. And we have one electron here. And remember, by Pauli exclusion principle, if one's going up, the second one in the same orbital has to be pointing down because no two electrons can share the same set of quantum numbers. So let's figure out what our term symbol is. So first we need to find L. So big L is going to be the sum of the little m sub Ls of both electrons. We have two electrons. so. Keep in mind that this m sub l is 0, right? So this is an l equals 0. So our m sub l of electron 1 plus m sub l of electron 2. And then so this is going to be equal to, they're both in this l equals 0, or I guess m sub l equals 0 orbital is 0 plus 0, which equals 0. So therefore, this is an s term, a big S. So capital S. OK, then we think about our big uh, So there's two confusing. Okay, so this is S for that term, the total orbital angular momentum. And here is S of spin. Don't get confused. I know there's kind of a lot of overlap. And then here I want to think about the m sub s, little m sub s of electron 1 plus little m sub s of electron 2. And then that's going to be equal to plus 1 half. And then the second electron is pointing down, so it's going to be minus 1 half. This is also equal to 0. So therefore, it's a singlet. So therefore, singlet. And then, so therefore, our term is singlet s. If we did a second example, let's say, uh, let's see, little p, 6. So remember, p orbitals have three m sub l's. This is m sub l minus 1, 0, plus 1. And these are all filled. Again, if we're looking at our big L, here we have six electrons. So we'll be summing up. It's going to be, uh, I'm not going to go through all the, it's ml1 plus ml2 plus ml3 plus ml4 plus ml5 plus ml6. It's going to be minus 1, minus 1, plus 0, plus 0, plus 1 plus 1. So this is also going to be 0, which means that this is another s state. And then big S, you can see all the electrons are paired, so our spin is also 0. So again, this is going to give us a singlet s term. So as you can see, even if we're not in an s orbital, if we have a closed shell um, electron configuration, we have a singlet s state. Because this refers to our um, just how many microstates there how many, so microstates are how many ways we can populate our electrons within these orbitals. There's only one way because they're all filled. And if we look at this singlet s state, we're talking about degeneracies, right? So it's 2s plus 1 times 2l plus 1. So 2s plus 1 is 1, like we just showed. 2l plus 1, so l equals, or big L is 0. So 2l plus 1 is also 1. So this gives us 1. So this is a singly degenerate. State just like we predicted, right? So if it's filled, again, there's only one way to, to fill the electrons, so that's why it's simply degenerate. Okay, so let's do a more complicated example. I'm going to quickly erase. Like, what happens if we're no longer in a closed shell system? Then we want to think about, then there's multiple ways of populating our orbitals.
and it gets to be somewhat of a pain. All right, here we go. Oops. Okay. Oh, things are flying. Okay. Let's do a first example. Let's keep it simple. We'll just have one electron. So, electron. Suppose our electron configuration is d1. So, we have one electron in our d orbitals. So, keep in mind again. Um, so, here are our d orbitals. And then we have m sub l is going to be minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. So first we can do a little bit of uh, probability. So uh, if you want to calculate how many ways of filling this are, so how many possibilities there are, we could think about uh, n. So this is the number of possibilities. So we'll say microstates is how many ways we can put one electron into these orbitals. And then, so this is going to be, um, the formula is little m over n prime over m sub minus n. And then, oops, parenthesis. Okay. And then so here we're saying little m is number of boxes. And then little n is the number of things you want to put in your boxes. So in this case, we have five orbitals, but the electron can go up or down. So we have 10 boxes. So here, this equals 10 factorial. But we have one thing. So n equals one because we have one electron. So it'll be one factorial. And then 10 minus 1 is 9. So this will be 9 factorial. So this gives us 10. So we should have 10 microstates. And so. We could, um, like, so you could uh, figure out your microstates by going, oh, OK, I could put one electron here. Or if I did something like something like this, these are two different microstates because here is m sub l equals minus 2. This would be m sub s equals plus 1 half. This would be m sub l equals minus 2. This would be m sub s equals minus 1 half. Anyway, so we could have 10 ways of putting it down. I'll let you figure it out. Um, but uh, and then keep in mind that since we have one electron, our big m sub l is going to be equal to our m sub l, because we have one electron. So we don't need to add anything up. If we have two electrons, we need to have m sub l of electron 1 plus m sub l of electron 2, which we'll do in the next example, which means that big m sub l is going to be equal to minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, right? because we can move this electron to each of these different orbitals. And then again, big M sub s, because we have one electron, is going to be a little m sub s. And as we just showed above here, it could be minus 1 half plus 1 half. So I find it actually easier to make, uh, instead of kind of drawing out the microstates directly, we can make a little microstate table. So here's my microstate table. It's not so relevant when you have only one electron, because we can draw. 10 microstates readily, but once we get to multiple electrons, it's going to be more of a pain. So the way you can construct a microstate table is, let's say we have big M sub s, big M sub l in this top left corner. And so we know that M sub s is going to be equal to minus 1 half or plus 1 half, so it has two possibilities, while M sub l, like we said, can go from 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2. So we just need to figure out which microstates are, can fill these total uh, angular momentum quantum number and the total spin quantum number. Um, because we have one electron, we are limited. So <laughs> basically, um, the notation that you might want to put is, let's say, one microstate, we could have 2 plus. So this is our um, little m sub l, which the electron is in. So keep in mind, this is little m sub l of electron 1, and then this is the spin. So this notation, 2 plus, refers to, um, I didn't draw it up here, but so this is our m sub l of 2. So 2 plus is this one. So we're kind of easily putting this notation into this table here. OK, so uh, and then we could have, again, 2 minus. 
which is if we flip this electron over. Um, and then here, this will be 1 plus 1 minus 0 plus 0 minus. This gets very boring. Minus 1 plus, minus 1 minus, minus 2 plus, minus 2 minus. So overall, what this means is that when we redraw our table, we could have a microstate count. So once we have the, the individual microstates, we don't care about them anymore. We just want to know how many there are. And then so if we have m sub s, sorry, m sub l, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, 1 half, minus 1 half. We have one microstate here, one microstate here, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. one. So what we're seeing is that we have 10 microstates, and then they're within these two spin states, and then they're, they're within these five total orbital angular momentum states. So if you want to think about this, this is going to be a doublet D term. So doublet D, keep in mind, this is our doubly degenerate uh, spin, so plus 1 half to minus 1 half. And then D is our L equals minus 2, minus 1, 0, oh sorry, big M sub L, 1, 2. So this doublet D is 2 times 5 is 10 microstates. So this doublet D term is tenfold degenerate, which means that if we think about this, all the microstates are taken care of within this term. Um, I'll give you another example, next one, with multiple electrons, and we'll see that this is not so necessarily so easy, but we'll, give an ex we'll see what happens when we have uh, more than one electron. Give me a second as I reset. OK. I'll leave this formula up here. Okay, and I'll erase this one. Okay, suppose we have a different example. Now we have two electrons. Um, I'm going to have one electron in an s orbital and one electron in a p orbital. So s1, p1 uh, configuration. Um, if you want, I could say it's 2s1, 2p1, right? That's our n. Okay, so what this means is that we have. Our electrons are going to be in 1, 0, minus 1, and then this is 0, right? So uh, we want to think about how many ways we can fill, how many microstates we can possibly have. So here we have kind of two different sets of boxes. So what we want to do is multiply them together. So first of all, we have six boxes, because three orbitals up or down. So this will be six factorial. And here, we, we know we have one electron in the p orbital. So we have one thing, so one factorial, five factorial. And then here, in this bottom one, bottom set of boxes, we have two boxes, up or down. So this will be two factorial for one electron, so one thing, one factorial. So this gives us 6 times 2, which is 12. We should have 12 microstates. And then so rather than drawing them all out, Again, we could make a microstate table, but let's figure out what our big m sub l's could be. So we know that little m sub l of electron 1 is going to be equal to 1, 0, or sorry, minus 1, 0, 1. m sub l of electron 2 is going to be equal to 0. So this means that our big m sub l, if we start summing these up, the minimum it could be is minus 1, the maximum it could be is 1. So this has got to be equal to minus 1, 0, 1, because these are the summing up of a little m sub l's. Uh, if we think about electrons, big m sub x is going to be equal to, so they could be both be spin down, so be minus 1. They could be uh, paired, so they'd be spin 0, and then they could be 1. And we need to make a table with these values. So let's make our table. So, OK, here we have m sub s, m sub l. And remember, m sub s now can be minus 1, 0, 1, and then m sub l could be minus 1, 0, 1. So let's think about our configurations that we could have. Um, so in order to have 
a total angular quantum number of minus 1, we have to have our p electron in the minus 1 m sub l orbital. So this will be electron 1 it's in, the, in the p orbitals. So minus 1. And then to have a total spin quantum number, both electrons will be spun down. So this will be minus 1, minus. So this electron is pointed down. And then again, for our s orbitals, we're stuck with m sub l in 0. So this has always got to be a 0 for our second electron. And it has to be spin down. So what I'm drawing here is this configuration. So minus 1 is over here, down. And then we have our s orbital also down. This is our microstate. Microstate. OK. So there's no other way to get to this set of total angular and total spin quantum numbers. So we have just one microstate that can fulfill this condition. On the other hand, if we have m sub l is minus 1 and spin is 0, we could have two microstates that fill the condition. So we could have uh, minus 1, 0. Again, so this has to be in the orbital minus 1. But this could be plus, this could be minus. And we also could have minus 1, minus, and 0, plus. So there's these two microstates that for this condition would be, right, here, here, or here, here. Same thing, but two microstates. OK. And lastly, here, we could have minus 1, plus, 0, plus. So both spin up. OK. And then if we are, our m sub l is 0, what this means is that this is 0 plus 0. So again, we're stuck here, 0 minus, 0 minus. This looks like it should break the Pauli exclusion principle because they both appear to have the same quantum numbers. But keep in mind that these are in different orbitals. So we can have a 0 minus, 0 minus um, in, in this uh, configuration. OK. And then here we could have, again, 2, 0 plus, 0 minus, 0 minus, 0 plus. And then here, this will be 0 plus, plus. Okay. And then lastly, here's our 1 minus 0 minus 1 minus 0 plus, 1 plus 0 minus, and then 1 plus 0 plus. So again, keep in mind uh, which electrons you're doing. And so overall, this gives us our table that we have m sub s minus 1, 0, 1, m sub l minus 1, 0, 1. We have 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 1, 1. So what this means is that this should immediately tell you, because uh, we have kind of like this column of twos, we have to have two terms that describe uh, this electron configuration. Um, and then so what I'll give you is first we, we see that m sub s, so for, let's say, look, let's, let's look at the set of ones. We could have 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So if we have m, big m sub s equals minus 1, 0, 1, and big M sub L equals minus 1, 0, 1. This is going to be a triply degenerate spin state, a triply degenerate uh, orbital angular momentum state. So this is going to give us a triplet P state. right? So big S is going to be 1. So 2S plus 1 is 3. And then P is a triply degenerate orbital angular momentum state. So this is our triplet P. So triplet P is, if you count the degeneracies, is 3 is 2s plus 1 times 2l plus 1 is 3. So this equals 9 microstates. So um, we can take out these microstates, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we have three microstates left. And in this case, for the second microstate, sorry, for, for the second set of microstates, these three microstates, we're saying that m sub s equals 0 because right, we don't have any microstates left with m sub s equals minus 1 or m sub s equals plus 1. But m sub l is still minus 1, 0, 1. So with all this, this will give us a singlet p state, which is going to be 1 times 3 equals triply degenerate. So that's our three remaining microstates plus 9, so 12 microstates. So this means that we're done. So what we're saying is that this atomic configuration, S1, P1, has two possible terms of two different energy levels, a triplet p term and a singlet p term. And they're different in energy because we have electron-electron repulsion, two electrons that result in different energies of these states.